Pass me not, O gentle Savior. Hear my humble cry. The pulpit is open. Why art thou thus at God? Holy to not pass me by. When we say that sin pays wages, it pays wicked wages. It's not sweet wages. Wicked wages. Look at Cain. Cain was uh, the firstborn. And Cain killed his brother. Am I correct? Wasted his brother's blood. Cain is the first occultic man. Cain is the first human sacrificer in the Bible. Because he wanted to overtake his brother's prosperity. And he was told from the other side to kill. And he killed his brother. Spilled the blood because of that blood that is spilled he said the ground it will cry against him and he will be a vagabond for life this is the reason why people who spill blood to make money when retribution matures this is blood for blood including abortion it's blood nonetheless sin found Cain out and my message to every one of us is my sin will find me out that's truth and it will help you get to the solution. Absalom. When you hear about Absalom, what do you hear about? Pride. Absalom was a very handsome man. Beautiful. But pride entered into him. He rebelled against the father. Pride is, <laughs> is, is the sin that starts from inside. Sin has many classes. Covetousness. Envy. What are the other inward sins? Backbiting. Greed. Thank you. Last. Powerful. Unforgiveness. Gossiping. Bitterness. You don't see them. That's why they are called inward. Jealousy. It is very easy for you to overcome outward sin. The inward one is the one that has held many things down. They don't know how to overcome it. If you have two poisons, one walking from inside and one walking from outside, which one kills faster? <laughs> <laughs> that is why they said Absalom when he died you know, they said he was, he was suspended between the heaven <laughs> and the earth yeah? and that's a very good example to you that every Christian who has not overcome inward sin cannot make it to heaven you can't leave this earth that's why the inward area after you have left the outwards listen there's not much praise in living, in living smoking and drinking and womanizing those are cheap sins to live and as a Christian, if you are still meddling in those cheap sins, oh my, <laughs> I can say to you that uh, <laughs> yeah, your Christianity is cheap. The sins that you overcome in the inside man, that's the one that heaven salutes you for. That is Absalom. How about Samson? Mighty warrior. One man against five nations, that was the level of the anointing and the power of God operating upon his life. With a jawbone of an axe, this man killed a thousand soldiers. He was dreaded by the Philistines, even till today. That great man, mighty in the deeds of the Holy Ghost. What brought him down? Sin. Walking through Delilah. It not only stripped him of the power of God, it stripped him of his eyes. And it took his life before his time. That is how wicked sin is. What more can I say to you? When Samson and Delilah were making it out and they were having all the romance and nobody saw them, it didn't mean much. But at the end of the day, what he did in the secret 
was announced in the public. When they were gouging out his eyes, no, I, I, it's not those Philistines that gouge his eyes out. When they were shaving his head off, it's not Delilah. It is sin. Sin will shave off the head of your anointing. I must warn you, it's not every pastor that is in this city that is of God. Anointing and sin cannot flow together. And if they are flowing together, the anointing is not from God. Sin will always exact an open penalty. When you look at the Lord Jesus Christ and saw how brutally he died on the cross, you think it's fanciful to wear the cross? No. It was sin that brought him to that public execution. And terrible execution that you saw that went up upon his life. Sin will not respect you because you're a woman or because you're a man. It is no respecter of persons. It will bring down the poor and it will bring down the rich man. It will not respect you because you're a pastor. He will not. He brought down Judas. Judas was a bishop. Nobody saw Judas when Judas took 30 shekels of silver to betray his Lord. But the sin found him out eventually. One of the sins that are eating young men up is the sin that is traceable to social media. The sin of pornography. The sin of uh, internet sex. And I must warn you. I, I, we had a message here we called the sin of windows. And he said through windows, wickedness has invaded our inner chambers. That windows, whether it be your small handphone, or it be your iPad, or it be your desktop, or it be your laptop, they are all windows. Watch what is coming through it into your life. One area that I want you to fight and keep fighting until you overcome it is the area of lust. Windows will put lust into your eyes. And when a man allows lust to rule his mind, that man will start to lose his brain. The Bible said God gave them over to reprobate mind. Watch where your eyes are going. It's for your health. Bible said, if your eyes are single, it said, light will come into you. Have a single eye. I'm going into the internet to do school work. Do school work and come out. Don't allow your mind to be taken up in other kinds of works. In the name of Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1 to 2. There is a spirit that walketh in the children of disobedience. It is a spirit of sins and trespasses. Sin is a spirit. There is no Christian heart that can endure sin. No Christian heart. We found out that when you went back to sin, you went back to sorrow. That was the evidence that showed us that you have become born again and all things have passed away. He said, for no man who is in Christ will remain an old creature. Those things that you love to do in the past, you can no more do them again. Not because you have power. But because there is something inside of you that will now make those things distasteful. So you will find that, yes, I can, I can smell liquor. I am a former alcohol addict. I am a former smoker. I want to go back to those things. But when you remember the sorrow afterwards, you won't go. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. And if you are here and you are still fighting sin by your muscle, I can tell you, until that thing inside of you wakes up, you cannot overcome sin. It's real. Jesus destroys sin. You cannot deal with sin by relocating. You don't deal with sin physically. If you want to overcome sin, you have to spiritually deal with sin. How does God deal with the sin problem? Sin and death go hand in hand. They are part of one coin. The soul that sinned shall what? The spirit of sin must kill. In the Old Testament, if you want to pacify sin, you give the sin an animal. You kill the animal and give it the blood. And that went on until the time of the reformation. Look at Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. And almost all things by the law are purged with what? Blood. And without the shedding of blood. There is no what? So you can begin to understand why God sent his only begotten son to shed his blood on Calvary. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus set me free from sin and sorrow. The blood of Jesus set me free. And I ask you the question that if there was no other way to pacify sin, but it had to cost God his only begotten son. 
will God joke with your own sins? If you ignore the solution of heaven for sin, will God joke with your own sins? That is why the cross for us is a great symbol of our liberty and our victory. The blood of Jesus is a great symbol that even today, hell still respects it where it is sung in the mouth of those who are not saved. Talk less about when it is sung in the mouth of people who are saved. May the work of the blood of Jesus Christ, may it affect your life in the name of Jesus Christ. How do you apply God's solution to your life? Solutions are abound in the Bible, but many, many of us miss it because either we don't go to proper churches where we are taught, or we are not truthful in our hearts. I find that truth is a big teacher. Even if you have no good church where you are going, but if you are sincere with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will teach you the correct part. Mm. The Holy Spirit will teach you the correct part. John chapter 3 verse 16. We know that one. What does he say? He gave his only begotten son. Whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have what? That's the solution. God has given it. But that does not mean that because Jesus died, everybody can go to heaven. <laughs> I'm a pharmacologist. If I make a good medicine, and I say to you, oh, this medicine is powerful. It can heal you from this sickness. That's what I know about the medicine. But if you want the healing, what do you do? You take the medicine and you eat it. This is why the Bible says you must be born again. There's no, there's no way about it. Jesus dying and paying the price of sin is different. But to take him in is what we call being born again. Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. This is the reason why not all people are saved. Not every church is going to heaven. It's the seed of Christ inside of your soul. If it is, sin can never conquer your life if you are born again genuinely. But if it's Jesus of the Bible, it will do what it claims to do. So that's number one. Receive Jesus into your life. And then natural victory over sin will be demonstrated inside of you. Number two is repent. What did I say? Say that aloud with me. Repent. repent. Once you receive Jesus, you must repent. There is no such thing as having Jesus and not repenting. Repentance means you turn away from that sin. Repentance means, no, I don't sin again. I don't steal anymore. I don't lie again. And particularly you do it with the witness of uh, a minister of the gospel, or another brother who is serious. When you repent, you empower Jesus to finish his work. Jesus does not walk in us by force. He walks in us by persuasion, by agreement. Number three, reckon yourself dead. Romans chapter 6 verse 11. As long as self is alive in you, you will sin. Even though Satan has been conquered, Satan can come back and take control of your life when self is inside of you. That's why Jesus says, you cannot be my disciple except you hate yourself. Some places in the Bible say, die to yourself. Apostle Paul says, I die daily. In other words, you are going to control, organize your life, and each time the question must be, who is to gain? Is it God or is it me? Am I advancing myself or am I advancing God? Any Christian who has reckoned himself as dead is always a successful Christian. And these are Christians that the power of God is always strong in their life. But if you are here, you're a Christian, and yourself is alive, it's going to be an uphill task for you to defeat sin. Very uphill task for you. Reckon yourself dead. Number four, confession. At the beginning, and after you become a child of God, confession is a way out of the spirit of sin. First John chapter 1, verse, is it verse 8? I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Who oh, things are passed away. I'm born again. More than a conqueror. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. God is my father. Jesus is my brother 
and the blessed Holy Spirit is my God the devil has no relation for I am a new creation and I'm blessed to the family of the Lord Emmanuel 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 my God Emmanuel Rise up on your feet. Say with me. Emmanuel. Yeah. Emmanuel. 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 My God. Emmanuel. So that's number four. If you want to destroy the spirit of sin and have a permanent victory over it, don't forget confession. Confession between you and God. Confession between you and man. Particularly when the sin is fresh. What did I say? When the sin is fresh. The longer it takes for you to confess a sin, the more the power of confession starts to die. Of course, you cannot use this scripture. I've told people you cannot use it. After you have planned and organized the sin and finished it, then you quote First John 1, 7. It doesn't work like that. Confession has conditions. Before he can destroy the spirit of sin. My last point to you is this. Be filled in the Holy Ghost. Somebody say be filled in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Among the Trinity. The Holy Spirit is the only one with two names. It's the Holy Spirit. And that tells you what his function and ministry is in your life. He's there to impact holiness to you. He's the one that applies the solution that Jesus has brought into your life. You cannot do it by yourself. It's because we, have, we are filled in the Holy Ghost that we have early warning devices. He warns us early. That's why the Bible said those who are sons and daughters of God, they are led. Because it's through leading that God delivers you from your sin. The Lord will be leading somebody this evening in the name of Jesus Christ. And it is how Jesus overcame this great weight of sin. Of Matthew 27 verse 46 to 47 and about the ninth hour jesus cried with a loud voice eli eli sama sabatani in the first place how can he be saying god why has that forsaken me did god tell him he was going to be delivered from the cross what did god tell him god said you must die and you must spend three days before you are resurrected the height of his pain what did jesus do jesus simply spoke in tongues <laughs> you heard that it sounds foolish but it's the most powerful force how many of you are able to speak in tongues here how many of you can i see your hands up i would that the whole church spoke in tongues because at that moment when the sin of the whole world came upon him even god turned away his eyes from his only begotten son and Jesus lifted his voice and he cried, Eli, Eli. People say they called Elijah. You see that? To tell you the confusion. <laughs> but as soon as he called on the Holy Ghost, and the Holy Ghost came into the scene, look at what happened afterwards. You begin to see movement of power. At that moment, he was released. The prolonging of his suffering was cut short. He was released. There was an earthquake. Temple cut in tall from top to bottom. Even those who were dead in the grave, they did what? They arose. May you speak in tongues also. <laughs> Everything is possible. All he did was to just lambast in the spirit. Be filled in the Holy Ghost this year. Do everything that you can. And be filled in the Holy Ghost this year. If you are a Holy Ghost filled brother, talking brother, living brother, sin cannot mess up with you. Instead, you will mess up with sin. Praise the Lord. Lift up your hands to the Lord and let's begin to thank him, thank him generally for. I have shown you the mystery of iniquity. Ah. My sin not in power, but in hope. Is nailed to the cross. And I have it no more. It is well we will my soul. My sin not empire, 
by is nailed to the cross. I bear it no more. And I bear it no more. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Oh, my soul. It is well. It is well. My soul, I sense the spirit of God here now. It is well, it is well with my soul. My sins hold the place of this glory. My sin not empowered. My sins not empowered. But the whole thing is nailed to the cross of Calvary. It's nailed. It is nailed to the cross. It is nailed to the cross. Somebody say, Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, oh my soul. My sin, not in part, but in whole, is nailed to the cross. I believe I have laid down for you the salvation program of God. If you're here, you want for the first time, genuinely, I'm not talking about ceremonial giving your life to Christ. If you are among those people that whenever altar call is made, you go and call, go, come back, go, come back. But you want to make this one the final altar call in your life. I want you to run to the pulpit. Run to the pulpit. Quickly, I want to pray with you. I want to pray with you. Is anybody coming? Is anybody coming? On the left side here, God bless you, bro. On my right hand side here, listen to me. You are here, you are a Christian. You are under a, an oppression of sin. An oppression of a particular sin that is bullying you. Be it inward sin or outward sin. I want you to come to the right hand side here. God bless you. In the name of Jesus. I have given you the truth of the word of God. I want you to now appropriate the truth into your heart before we pray. First and foremost, I want you to thank God for the solution. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his blood. Thank God for Jesus. Thank God for his blood. Just talk to him before we pray. Father, I ask, as he has opened his mouth, let him be forgiven. Let him be forgiven. Let him be restored. For the Bible said, upon Mount Zion shall the deliverance of your people be. And so also shall their reward and their repayment. Therefore, Lord, I agree with him as he lives in this place. May he be translated, O oh God, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Thank you, precious Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, we ask that you will take charge of his soul from now onwards. We ask, O oh God, that you go to war against everything that is inimical to his soul and bring him deliverance that is thorough in the name of Jesus Christ. Go and serve the Lord in the name of Jesus. I will not lay my hands on anybody who is not serious. If you are under the torment and you really know that you want the help of the Lord, ask that the Holy Spirit will give you that solution, will touch you in that particular area. I repent of the cooperation that I've been having with this particular issue. I repent of my agreement. Lord, I'm here to receive extraordinary grace. I'm here to receive extraordinary grace. I'm here to be cleansed. I'm here to be washed. Let me not leave this pulpit an unchanged man. For this reason was the Son of God manifest, that he might destroy. So therefore, Lord, as I stand here, destroy, destroy, destroy. Destroy, destroy, destroy. 
I cannot hear you cry out from your heart. My every power of iniquity, every spirit of sin that is controlling my life by this message, die. Pray in the name of Jesus Christ. You are the temple of the Holy Spirit. Take this song with me. The blood that conquers Satan. The blood of Jesus. The blood that conquers Satan. With the whole of your heart. The blood that conquers Satan. The blood of Jesus. Sing the song, sing the song, sing the song with the whole of you. The blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. I want to see somebody move in the power of this song. The blood of Jesus, 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 the blood the blood of Jesus, the blood of the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, the Yes, great Jehovah. He said that we shall, you shall lay our hands upon the sick and they shall recover. Lord, as I stretch my hands upon them now, great Jehovah, let the healing virtue flow. Let it flow, great Father. Lord, I am not standing by my own accord. I am standing by your mandate through your servants. Eternal Father, and oh Lord, this rod can never return unto him void. Blessed Jehovah, as I am standing now and raising up my hand, let thy angels with healing their wings begin to flow round about them. Let it begin to flow over them right now, great Jehovah, and let the healing begin to drop upon their heads in the name of Jesus Christ. Dependable Redeemer, let the sickness, let them begin to disappear. Let them begin to vanish in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, by your anointing, I seize every oppression of sickness in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I bind them, O Lord, and I command them to get out in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty Father, because I know you've answered. Blessed Father, I ask, O Lord, that by this time next Sunday, those pains, those sickness, those disease, those things, O Lord, have been troubling their life, they shall find them no more. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, mighty God, because you honor the words of your servants. And I know that you have honored this one now. Be thou exalted for answer to prayers. In Jesus' name I have prayed.